A very good evening to you. I am Pearson Bowen. The quiet neighborhood of Thomas Gap and Wilkinson Road, St. Michael, was rocked by fire this afternoon. Eight houses in total were affected, with five being destroyed, while three others were extensively damaged, leaving over eight people homeless. Two fire tenders and ten officers under the command of Acting Deputy Chief Fire Officer Lloydston Phillips responded to that blaze just around a quarter to three. Following the blaze, he shared this advice with Barbadians. I want to encourage our people to be careful of how they go about their, their business and uh, make sure that um, when they are burning or trying to cook food or whatever, to make sure that um, it is out before they leave home. Well, CBC News understands that an 80-year-old woman had to be rescued from one of the burning homes. One of the fire victims, David Bennett, got the news of his loss while he was at work. Several dogs belonging to one of the homeowners were also burnt it to death in the incident. I was getting ready for a funeral. My mother can't walk for no reason. I'm not ready going to the church. My mother would have got burned up. I saved a couple. My mother ain't saved nothing. And I, I saved a couple clothes. No, I ain't sure. It was about to insure because I had to do the work on the ground still. I could insure. I ain't saved nothing at all. Member of Parliament for the area, Michael Carrington, told CBC News he has gotten assistance for the residents. We were able to get the services like the Urban Development Commission, the Welfare Department, and the National Housing Corporation to. Uh, either be in, in contact or to send some officers. Of course, the welfare department, they, has, they, they will give limited support. They have a, some standard emergency support that, they, that kicks in, which will help uh, buy essentials and, and, and uh, a bit of food, etc. The Barbados Association of Medical Practitioners, BAMP, is welcoming the promised injection of $22 million into the Queen Elizabeth Hospital by the Minister of Health. That came yesterday in Parliament in response to BAMP's plea for a swift resolution to the critical shortages of supplies affecting the hospital. In a statement, BAMP says while government was unable to directly acknowledge the depth of the current crisis, it is pleased that it has recognized the pressing need to purchase supplies and has promised much needed funds. While recognizing that shortages at the QEH are not new, BAMP says they are more severe and more frequent than ever and are definitely compromising the standard of care at the hospital. The association is also cautioning that the strategy of providing short-term financial supplements has only contributed to the chronic and recurrent nature of the problem. Well, following government's announcement of that injection of funds into the operations of the hospital today, a team from CBC visited the city to find out whether people think that this will be enough in an improved service for members at the, of the public. I don't think it benefit for the I I out for the public. I don't think it benefit benefit for the public at all. Why is that? Because it has been bad for years and it any change is just so. I think it would be a, a good thing for the QEH and I expect everything will hopefully this will be an improvement from passing. It will let the system get injected into the um E and E because E and E always suffering. They're gonna be in there twenty seven hours before you get to so I thought that will help boost it. Yes, I think it will improve. Any injection of money, regardless of where it's coming from, will help. It's no use going to the hospital and you have a prescription, go to the pharmacy and there's nothing there, you cannot get the medication. It doesn't make sense going to the doctor, seeing him and then can't get what can relieve your pain. So any help, yes. International hotel brand Sandals has expressed a desire to purchase the majority of its produce from local farmers. Word of this has come from Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul. Speaking to CBC at the AgroFest Awards ceremony this morning, he revealed that both sides had been in deep discussions. Just last year, Sandals received several concessions in several areas, including food and taxes from government. If you look at the, 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 the business plan that, um, approach that, that Sandals has in other countries, it is clear that if they are prepared to, to, to buy 100% of the produce once it can be sourced locally at a sufficient enough quality, and that is something that we have to spend resources on to work with farmers in the agricultural sector to ensure that we can produce at the type of quality that Sanders will be asking. 
Mr. Paul is also challenging other hotels that have been calling for similar concessions as Sandals to commit to buying more local produce. That, that could apply to other hotels in this country. There is no agricultural produce that we need to import for the, to the tourism sector. Um, because if the hotels are prepared to work with the farmers and let us know what varieties that they want, give us a chance to be able to supply, we can do it in the agricultural sector. Barbados is moving to introduce anti-discriminatory legislation to protect Barbadian workers. Minister of Labour Senator Dr. Esther Bayer Saku provided some insight into that proposed legislation, which she says is coming soon, at a symposium on gender equality at the Baobab Towers in Warrens. Which will protect employees from discrimination on the grounds of gender, race, religion, disease, disability, etc. And we are currently in the process of reviewing the second draft of the bill, and it is my hope that this new bill will soon be on the statute books. Senator Bayersiku says Barbados has come a long way but has not yet fully achieved gender equality. She's optimistic that target can be reached. The Labour Minister says the approach of her ministry in gender mainstreaming is clearly articulated in the national employment policy. One of its several objectives is to address inequalities through the provision of decent work opportunities for all persons, taking into account the needs of vulnerable categories of workers, such as women, the youth, migrant workers, and persons living with disabilities. Of course, as was mentioned, uh, gender is not just women, but in the world of work, women are seen as being more vulnerable than men. And Director of the Bureau of Gender Affairs, Patricia Hackett Codrington, says Barbados will soon have a national policy on gender. I expect by the end of Jul July to have the first draft. And we know that coming out of this national policy, there will be strategies which will have to be implemented, not only by the public service, but by the public sector as well. Well, more news ahead, but time now for you to become interactive with us. We'd want to hear from you on this question. Do you think hotels are buying enough produce from local farmers? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll share the results at the end of the news. energy from Africa. Your favorite cities just got closer. Announcing the enhanced Scotiabank Aero Platinum MasterCard. Now you can fly to New York or Miami with just 20,000 Scotia points. Take off sooner and redeem your points later. With your new Scotiabank Aero Platinum MasterCard, you'll receive up to 12,000 Scotia points, plus chances to win a fabulous trip to New York City. Apply by July 31st. Call 1-800-744-2672 or visit your nearest branch. Scotiabank, discover what's possible. The future of social commentary in Barbados is secure with the upcoming young Calypsonians passing through the Junior Monarch competition. This analysis from Chief Executive Officer of the National Cultural Foundation, Cranston Brown, as the 17 finalists in the Junior Monarch competition drew positions for the finals coming off on July the 19th at the Garfield Sobers Gymnasium. Mr. Brown says the Scotiabank Juniors Monarchs is more than a competition and he saluted the bank for its assistance in the development of the talents of these juniors. Speaking of development and solid foundation, Scotiabank should be applauded for their contribution to this process. They continue to be more than a partner, but a cornerstone in the development 
of the Calypso art form at this level. Scotiabank takes a hands-on approach and those of you who have attended the workshops can attend to the, attest to this. In addition to the mentorship aspect, another constant at the workshops is the presence of Scotiabank representatives coaching these junior savers and providing money management tips. Senior Marketing Manager at Scotiabank, Lisa Cole, says through the competition, many juniors have progressed to the big stage. Kemal, Malika, Sarua, Lilaz, Nawaziza and Tiffany G are just some of the juniors who have gone on to lend their talent on the senior stage and keep Kaiso fresh. It is this kind of progress that has made it a joy for us to be involved with the nurturing of the future of Barbadian Calypso. Scotiabank is proud to be one, to be the one to support our artists when they are just starting out. Well, this year's Junior Monarch pr promises to be an exciting one as there are no reigning monarchs in either category. Taking to the stage first in the 8 to 12 category is Princess Mighty Makeda Thomas, then Renan Hackett, Liana Black Beauty Eiffel, Jade Grant, Trizel Jatanya Aline, Korea Starfire Campbell, Kionai Kiki Boo Walker, and Asher Dynamo Murrow. In the eight, 13 to 18 category, Kimori Mighty Katie Trotman will take to the stage first, followed by Terry Sparkle Williams, Jamal Slocum, Ricardo R.J. Reed, Samantha Sammy G. Graves, Darian D.J. Jordan, Moesha Nubian Queen Daniel, Adela Payne, and Chad DeMike. DMC, one plays E. The police have arrested a third man as they continue to investigate a series of shooting incidents in the Pine and Titchburn, St. Michael. 19-year-old Evan Rahim Andre Jordan of First Avenue Skeets Road in the Ivy is the latest to be held. He appeared in court today on charges of wounding with intent, endangering life and the use of a firearm and was remanded to prison until August the 6th. 20-year-old David Nathaniel Taniel Lynch and 23-year-old Jamal Ashby, both of the Ivy St. Michael, have also been remanded in relation to the ongoing investigation. Well, the top prizes for the three biggest competitions of the Crop Over Festival have got sweeter, a quarter of a million dollars sweeter to be exact. This was revealed during a press conference at the National Cultural Foundation to announce the platinum sponsors of this year's festival. Lisa Broom has more. The major festival sponsors have upped the ante this season, letting their money talk in what are tough financial times. McInerney Equality Inc. for one is providing two top-of-the-line Ford SUVs for the winners of the Sweet Soka and Party Monarch competitions valued at $80,000 each. And for the Piccadilly Crop competition, the winner will drive away with a Mazda 3 worth about $90,000. Consultant and brand manager Joseph Tudor says MQI appreciates the effort it takes for the Calypsonians to prepare for the various competitions and has even helped some of the multiple winners sell their vehicles. We have had uh, scenarios where they have actually converted the, their winnings into, into, into cash because they would report many times that it is very expensive to be involved in the performing mm -hmm. uh, aspect of the festival and sometimes they actually need the cash. Mr. Tudor says despite the significant financial outlay for the company, the returns are worth it. Uh, we have found that using or, or donating prizes to the Crop Over Festival, we have over the years seen a massive increase in support from the public. And we are, we are not at all daunted by the fact that we, our contribution is fairly large the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation is another platinum sponsor and will again support some of the pan events along with the Sweet Soka competition. Marketing and Communications Officer Diane Fort says social commentary lovers will also get to see some of the tents on television. CBC has been able to negotiate with some of the tents if they so desire to actually record. I think to date we have recorded um, headliners and I stand corrected but perhaps Stray Cats and um, the, the challenge with the, with the social commentary is that a lot of people don't see viability, a lot of the Calypsonians don't see the viability in recording it, and there's a cost to them. So they're not recording the music, so we really don't get it until perhaps a semi-final night. 
Ms. Fort says 98.1 The One will continue to play 100% Calypso for the rest of the season. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs Chris Sinclair says it appears the economic partnership agreement with Europe remains an esoteric document for some. He was criticizing the sluggish action by the private sector to embrace the EPA. Mr. Sinclair says there is much to gain as he moved the second reading of the Economic Partnership Agreement Bill 2013. The Finance Minister welcomed moves by the Ministry of Culture to get players in the cultural sector to take advantage of the agreement. It says that whatever we give to the Bissau Clause um, Preference Clause section, I think it is 238 if my memory serves me correctly, that gives what we give to the European Union, we give no less to those who are in partnership with us, which is the CARIFORM countries. So it allows the Dominican Republic and Haiti to get access. But we also have access to their markets. And that is important. I know our colleagues in the OECS view that clause with some degree of suspicion and with good cause. But we can't always see the negatives. We also have to see the positives of it. Mr. Sinclair says the agreement provides some flexibility for small economies like Barbados, whose manufacturers have to source some of their material from other markets. So, for example, we, um, we produce rum here, but a lot of the molasses we have to import from other countries. Now, if you are to run a strict rules of origin standard, and you look at the cumulative effect or content of that product, Molasses is such a critical part of the process that all rum might be deemed to have broken the rules on, 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 on rules of origin, the standard on rules of origin. But the agreement allows us the flexibility and the space in those cases 